Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding Oscilloscope's Lisa Zhu Patterns. In this presentation, we'll provide a technical introduction to the creation, interpretation, and use of Lisa Zhu Patterns. Oscilloscopes create Lisa Zhu Patterns in so-called XY mode. We'll provide a brief review of XY mode in this presentation, but if you'd like more detail on XY mode or information on other XY mode applications, please see the separate presentation Understanding Oscilloscopes XY Mode. Lisa Zhu patterns, also called Lisa Zhu curves or Lisa Zhu traces, are named after the 19th century French physicist Jules Antoine Lisa Zhu. Lisa Zhu was interested in studying the relationship between different frequencies and used a collection of lights, tuning forks, mirrors, and the natural persistence of human vision to visually display these relationships. For example, when a pair of tuning forks with attached mirrors were placed at right angles to each other, a figure 8 pattern would be created by light reflecting off of these mirrors. Although Lisa Zhu patterns were originally used for studying audio signals, in modern times they're often used to visualize the phase and or frequency relationship between two electrical signals. This is done by plotting two oscilloscope input channels against each other in so-called XY mode. In XY mode, one oscilloscope channel is plotted against, or as a function of, another oscilloscope channel, rather than as a function of time. This can be useful for many different applications. Creating Lisa Zhu patterns on an oscilloscope is very easy. The X signal is connected to one channel, the Y signal is connected to another channel, and XY mode is started. Note that many modern digital oscilloscopes are capable of displaying the individual X and Y signals together with the Lisa Zhu pattern. As with all other oscilloscope measurements, the horizontal, vertical, and triggering systems must all be configured appropriately. The shape or appearance of a Lisa Zhu pattern is a function of three things. The difference in amplitude between both signals, the difference in phase between both signals, and the ratio of frequencies of both signals. Let's start by looking at amplitude. If both the X and Y channels are identical in amplitude, phase, and frequency, and assuming the same volts per division setting on each channel, the resulting Lisa Zhu pattern is simply a straight line with a slope equal to 1. If both inputs are sine or other repeating waveforms centered around 0 volts, then this line will also pass through the origin. Any amplitude offset between X and Y will shift the line horizontally or vertically. It's worth noting that the length of this line is controlled by the volts per division setting for each channel. The slope of the straight line depends on the relative amplitudes of the two channels. For example, if the amplitude of the Y channel is one-third the amplitude of the X channel, then the slope of the line will be one-third. On the other hand, if the amplitude of the Y channel is three times the amplitude of the X channel, then the slope will be three. These examples assume the same volts per division setting on each channel. Note that a similar effect would be seen if the channel amplitudes were equal, but the volts per division settings were different. In the remainder of this presentation, all of our examples will assume that both X and Y have equal amplitudes with no offset, that both waveforms are centered around zero volts, and that both channels have the same volts per division setting. Now we'll move on to the effect of a phase difference between the two channels. Detecting and or measuring the phase difference, or offset, between X and Y is the most common application of Lisa Zhu patterns. In most cases, this phase offset will create an oval-shaped pattern, as can be seen by plotting pairs of X and Y values. The width of the oval is a function of the amount of phase shift between the channels. Let's take a look at some examples. We've already seen that a zero-degree phase shift results in a straight line with a positive slope. As the amount of phase shift increases, this line becomes an oval which gets wider until turning into a circle at a phase offset of 90 degrees. The oval then starts sloping in the opposite direction until it becomes a straight line with a negative slope at 180 degrees. A similar progression occurs in the opposite direction until the oval eventually returns to being a straight line after the phase is shifted the full 360 degrees. Lisa Zhu patterns also show the frequency ratio of the X and Y channels. This can be done by counting the number of tangencies 
that is, the number of nodes or lobes in the pattern. For example, if there is a 1 to 4 frequency ratio between the X and Y channels, then the resulting leisure pattern will have one vertical tangency and four horizontal tangencies. Note, however, that this methodology only produces a stable or consistent result when there's an integer ratio between the two frequencies. Let's look at a few frequency ratio examples, starting with the difference between a 1-2 and a 2-1 frequency ratio. Some ratios, such as 1-3, will appear as a line if there's no phase offset between X and Y. And the counting tangencies methodology also works for higher frequency ratios or non one to Y ratios such as 3 2 or 4 7. Later in this presentation we'll examine what happens when there's a non integer relationship between the two frequencies. Next let's look at the three main applications of Lisa Zhu patterns namely measuring phase differences, measuring frequency differences, and detecting distortion or clipping in one of the channels. Measuring the phase difference or offset between X and Y is the most common application of Lisa Zhu patterns. In order to do this, the XY plot must be centered around the origin, and the signal voltage or amplitude must be the same on both channels. Phase shift can be measured in two ways. The first is by finding the distance between where the pattern touches the y-axis and the distance between the max and min values of the pattern. The phase shift is then calculated by taking the arc sine or inverse sine of this ratio. Here the result is 45 degrees. Alternatively, this can also be done by using the ratio of the positive y-intercept and the max value of the pattern, since this produces the same ratio and thus produces the same arc sine value or phase offset. We saw earlier how counting the tangencies in a Lisa Zhu pattern can be used to determine the frequency ratio between X and Y. Therefore, we can measure relative frequencies using the following methodology. First, we count the number of vertical and horizontal tangencies. We then multiply the frequency of X by this ratio to obtain the frequency of Y. For example, if the frequency of X is 1 kHz, and we have five horizontal tangencies and four vertical tangencies, then the frequency of Y is 5 divided by 4 times 1000 or 1.25 kilohertz. Note, however, that there's a practical upper limit on the number of tangencies that can be accurately counted. Another application of Lisa Zhu patterns is detecting non-integer frequency ratios. Even very small non-integer differences between the frequencies of X and Y can easily be detected because this will cause a Lisa Zhu pattern to rotate as the signals drift out of phase. For example, if the frequency relationship between two signals is fixed, the pattern will also be fixed or non-rotating, whereas a non-fixed relationship creates a rotating or moving Lisa Zhu pattern with the amount and speed of this rotation being a function of the non-integer difference in frequency between the X and Y signals used to create the pattern. Lisa Zhu patterns can also be helpful in detecting certain types of amplitude distortion. This can be done by assigning X to a device's input signal and Y to a device's output signal. In this example, the output signal has the same amplitude and frequency as the input signal, but is slightly shifted in phase. If, however, the output signal is clipped or truncated, this will also cause the Lisa Zhu pattern to be clipped or distorted, as shown here. This amplitude-related behavior can easily be seen regardless of the phase or frequency relationship between the two channels. Let's end with a brief summary. Lisa Zhu patterns, or curves, are created on an oscilloscope in so-called XY mode by plotting two input channels against each other instead of plotting them individually as functions of time. In this presentation, we've covered how Lisa Zhu patterns can be used to visualize the relationship between X and Y in terms of their relative amplitudes, frequencies, and phases. In addition, the difference in amplitude, frequency, and phase between the two channels can often be calculated by making measurements of the resulting Lisa Zhu patterns. This concludes our presentation Understanding Oscilloscopes, Lisa Zhu Patterns. If you'd like to learn more about other applications of XY mode, 
or other oscilloscope measurements, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.